Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Friday, May 12th, 2023. Sorry I'm running a little bit late, guys, but today is a weird kind of day. Well, I just got a late start to stuff today. Uh, that's all. I woke up on the, at the normal time, but it took me a little bit longer to kind of get moving this morning. And then uh, that took a little bit longer then to get the video edited this morning. And so it took me longer to get out there for my run this morning. <sighs> I just got back a little while ago and I put a different shirt on. I haven't showered yet, so I'm super gross. Fortunately, there's no one in the studio today to smell me because it's just me in here now. But we're here. It's time for a live stream. I got a new package too. This one's from Drip Drop. A PR company that I work with said that they picked these guys up as a new client and wanted to know if I'd try it out. I said, sure. I have no idea what they sent. Uh, I think we talked about a couple of flavors and stuff, but I was like, you know, send whatever you feel like sending. So we'll see what's in this package. But first, let's say hi to everyone listening in on the uh, audio only version on the podcast. Hopefully, they're having a good run out there today. The weather right now, it's singlet weather. It's really nice for running. Not too hot, but nice and warm. So it definitely feels like spring, almost summerish. Not really, but a nice, comfortable temperature for running. And uh, I'm definitely very, very thirsty. So I'm very glad to have some hydration product with me today. And uh, hopefully when you're out there running, listening to this, hopefully you got some nice hydration product with you too. I don't know if this is like a sport drink or an after kind of drink. I'm not sure. We'll take a look at this and I'll tell you guys all about it as you're listening in on your run. And everyone watching this later, but not live, welcome to the number one running a live stream to listen to in the background. When you're trying to figure out, should you run your long run on Saturday this week? Should you run it on Sunday? Here's the thing. If you do it on Saturday, you probably will have some other people to run with. But for me, a lot of times Sunday just works a little bit better in the schedule. So my vote is usually for Sunday. So that's to the extent that it matters. I'm going to say go with Sunday. You know, here's the thing. Uh, I was listening on my run today to the Drop podcast, and they hit number one in the charts. I don't know where everyone gets these charts from. Every once in a while, 40 from uh, Chris Ford will send me a chart saying something about letting me know where the Kafuzi Run Club podcast is. Uh, but I don't look at that, whatever that email list is that people get that. I don't, I don't sign up for it, that service or whatever. So I don't know. Um, but apparently the drop podcast, which is one of my favorite running podcasts to listen to hit number one this week. Um, and I thought that was awesome. So they were saying like, we are the number one running podcast. And I'm like, that's true, but you're not the number one running live stream podcast to listen to, to have on in the background while you know, whatever that category may be. So like for me, the secret to my success has always been keep niching down, get smaller and smaller and smaller until like you get to num be number one. Like I'm probably, another one I could be like is the number one running podcast that's set in front of a giant wall of shoes, right? Because are there other ones? I'm trying to think, there might be other ones. I might not be the number one running podcast set in front of a large wall of shoes. But I don't know. I'm just going to go out and declare it. Because I don't, there, there isn't an email list. To, there isn't a subcategory for all those things. So no one can fact check me on that. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of how I put it. All right. Let's see who we got in the chat today. Matt, Matt Shea says, you know, I love the drop. Though sometimes today comes into mind. It's a little rambly for my taste. You know what, though? That's the thing. Uh, I like the ramble. As you can tell. I mean, if you're watching this, you know that I like the ramble. This is a lot of ramble, too. Um, you know? So uh, that's why. That's why I feel like I like that one. I was actually thinking about emailing them, or emailing them. I was going to text Robbie. Robbie texts me every once in a while. Um, we talk shop. Sometimes I, I'll text Thomas, you know, and we'll talk shop a little bit too. Um, I was thinking about texting them and be like, you guys need to add a third day because they have two days a week now. They have like one rambling day and then the other day is like an interview. I feel like they need a third day. I don't know if they need to bring in another guest you know, because they do an interview one day and then they do the ramble the other day. I feel like they, I could, I could go for a third day. Here's the thing, for me, um, I've, I've been going. I, I, I always listen into something when I'm running. I usually only listen to music on a workout, although I have been listening to a lot of music lately. But it all comes to my ultimate point. After Boston, I'm in like an off season. I've been doing just a lot of easy running. And so I've been listening, I've been consuming running content like crazy, but it feels like from a podcast perspective, after Boston, everyone's going into a lull and we're, I think it's going to be slow until we get into like 
you know, fall marathon season time again. And then we start talking to pros that announce like, oh, they're going to be running Chicago. They're going to be running Berlin, you know, that kind of thing. So like running content is in a lull. No disrespect to anyone that's making content right now, but it's like not as exciting as like pre-Boston content. So it's in a little bit of a lull. I've been running more easy miles than ever. So I need more. So everyone needs to step up. That's what I'm saying. So I could use a third day, <laughs> you know? Uh, um, yeah, but uh, someone had a good point here. Let's see. Um, Richard Wilson says, the DGR studio count. He's got a big, yeah, the studio counts, but he does, does he do a regular podcast from there? I don't think he's doing a podcast from there. He does lives every once in a while, but I feel like, you know, I mean, if I'm going to say it's a running, number one running live stream, his is probably better. But if I'm going to call it the number one running podcast to listen to, then I think maybe. So I could say like number one running podcast in front of a big wall of shoes. Right? Maybe. Maybe. You know, see, it's just, it's all, it's all in how you slice it up. <laughs> it's all in how you slice it up. Um, all right. Um. I run and be, Ryan says alternate option become the number one running podcast spoken entirely in pig Latin. I don't know. I don't think I could do that. You know, that's one thing that I can't do. I've never been able to do that very well. I've always thought that I'm pretty good with languages. Growing up, I used to speak many languages. Uh, like I would just, you know, I would, I would pick them up pretty quickly because I already spoke two at home, two at home, English and Korean. And then like when I took Spanish in school, that always came very easily to me. I took German in school for a little while. I took two languages in high school for a little while just because I thought that they were fun. I took a lot of Spanish in college. Not a lot. A couple of courses. I took some French in college. You know, I, I told, languages have always been fun. But you know what I can never do? I can never do the alphabet backwards even when I'm sober. And I can't do pig Latin very well. It just takes me too long. I don't, there's something about it. It's just my brain doesn't work that way. You know? I don't know. I don't think I could do that one. Um, all right. Let's see. Jarius, <laughs> Jarius Ryo says, this is the number one live stream. We're trying to figure out who's the number one live stream. There we go. I like that one. That could be it. Um, Stevie76 says, how lucrative is the podcast revenue stream? The revenue stream is actually zero. So I make no money on this because the channel that this on, the Kofuzi Run Club channel, oh, I think it's, mon oh, you know what? It, I think it has, it certainly has enough watch time and I think it has enough subscribers to be a monetized channel. So maybe I should turn that on, but I haven't been turning on, I don't think I turned on ads on this. So people that watch this on the live stream later, but not live, all you guys, that could be another category. The number one non-monetized running podcast. So I make nothing. And actually, here's the other thing that I was thinking about, you know, um, you know, here, I didn't, I didn't want to spam people's DMs and stuff. That's the thing. But I was thinking about doing like, you know, I am interested in picking up some sponsors for the live stream. But, you know, I, I, can't, I, I, don't, I don't really feel like I need it to be a sponsor because like people send packages. We'll do an unboxing every day. I've been making reels about it. I've been making YouTube shorts on it. And that's, that's been kind of fun. It's, you know, I feel like it's sustainable enough. Um, and then I don't have to worry about conflicts if someone sends a package and I want to open it on the live stream. But. Is there a, you know, is there a brand that you'd want me to be sponsored by? Like there's so, I, I think there's like the usual suspects that are out there. I've never reached out to them. They've never reached out to me. Probably because this podcast is real small and that's fine. Even though it is the number one running podcast to listen to while you're trying to, trying to figure out what's the next hydration product that you should buy. But, um, I don't know. Should we take on sponsors for this? Lalope says Manscaped. I think I'd be the worst spokesperson for Manscaped. I'm super disheveled. I'm averaging like one shave every two months, maybe every one month, and then a haircut. On average, for the last like three years, I'm averaging one every like 18 months. So, so I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I was saying like, here's the thing. If, if, you, if, you, if you're watching this podcast, or if you're watching this live stream, let, you, I'll make a clip and I'll put it on uh, my Instagram stories. So that way you can tag, you can look at it and tag someone and like tag a brand or something, or let me know in the bottom on the brand. If you want, just so that way you could let them know that they should reach out to me. You know what I mean? I don't know. Mm, Brian says Ridge wallet. Mm, 
I don't know. I don't really carry a wallet. I usually I I leave my wallet in the car because it has my driver's license in it. Manscaped. I don't know. We just talked about why Manscaped would be a bad idea. BetterHelp. I think I could use BetterHelp. I actually think I could might be maybe, might be need I, what I need. Although maybe I'm the exact person that Manscaped needs because it could be like a before and after. I don't know. Lou says it would be nice if you had one day had the live stream speaking only in Spanish. Ooh, you know what? I think I would need a lot more. I, I would need a lot of brushing up before I could do that. You know? Um, Midlife Runner says, this is the number one live stream to listen to while eating sushi. An El Fuego roll. Is it the number one live stream to listen to while eating sushi? Because I feel like there's probably, there's probably like a Japanese running podcast. Are there Japanese running podcasts out there? Like Japanese language, Japanese podcasts about the Japanese running scene? I feel like that should be, if that's not a thing, someone needs to figure that out. Right, because think about like the Ekaden running scene, the club running scene out there, like, like hyper local running news, and like a podcast. I feel like that would be, that would be a hit. Not with me, because I don't speak Japanese, but with other Japanese runners, I think that'd be cool. I don't know. I mean, like runner says, oh, Co, one of the main reasons this is my go-to listen on my daily run back when I didn't have YouTube Premium was that it didn't get interrupted by ads. I know, and I don't want to interrupt it with ads. Like, not like YouTube ads, though. You know what I mean? Like, if I were to do have, like, a sponsored, um, I think I were doing, like, ad reads. I think that that would be, I think that that'd be okay. Do you, would you guys get mad at that? I don't think you guys would get mad at that. I don't know. <laughs> Scott says, I've been sponsoring Rabbit on your behalf. <laughs> and Matai says, you know, I tried gnarly after you tried it. Okay. Um, Calvin says you should look at NordVPN, Audible, and Honey. You know what? I do. I want to reach out to Audible because, like, I use Audible all the time, all the time. Um, like that would be that would be a very easy integration because I talk about audiobooks that I listen to all the time. Anyway, I don't know what Honey is and NordVPN. Here's the thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, influencers. I guess that's what I'll just say as a blanket term, a term of convenience. I know it's not an accurate term, but we'll just say influencers. A lot of influencers, or people that are like smaller, are getting targeted by scammers now. So there's a lot of, um, I'm not saying it's NordVPN that's doing it, but a lot of them are like, one of the ones that's very common, it, it's a VPN service. I don't remember if it's Nord or what, but it's like super covered in red flags, but it's about like, hey, your channel is great. We think we would like to have... Um, uh, someone sponsor you have to sponsor some of your content you know vpns are really important these days like click on this link you know um so yeah that, that's another thing that's interesting i you know here, here's the thing i think i may have been in contact with nordvpn back when i was traveling a lot more about doing something and then uh i kind of dropped the ball on it and then i was trying to look through my emails to find it again and then i found all these scammy ones and i was like oh i don't know i don't know Stevie 76 is a nose hair clipper sponsorship. Has, has my mom been talking to you, Stevie? My mom is always on me about my nose hairs. I got to tell you. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. E says, sorry, I don't understand this. Says, sorry to say, guys, but I'm not a runner anymore. I moved to the dark side and become a gym bro. Best of luck. <laughs> I don't know. I just think that's funny. Remy says, you know, ad reads are great when you put your own spin on it. And that's kind of how I'd want to do it. So, like, I think auto would be great. I think I, be, I keep getting emails from Epidemic Sound, the place that I do my music subscription with, saying that they want to do, like, a paid campaign. And I feel like I should do that. Maybe I could do that with some of, like, the training videos. Because it's easier to do on the training videos because that's not a specific product that I'm recommending. You know, I'm telling you about, like, mile repeats. So I like to put it in there. Um, it's harder to be like, let me tell you about this new uh, Adidas shoe. But before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about uh, NordVPN. You know, I I feel like that's hard to do. I don't like that. And I'm like, these videos are like nine minutes long. Is there room for an ad read? But for, for, for a podcast, I feel like there's space for it, you know. Oh, my says, have the company send a microphone flag or stickers to put on a blank microphone flag? Yeah, so something like right here, 
right by like where the shore microphone thing is. Um, that that could work. That could work. I mean, like, I got shelves. Maybe I just start putting things on the shelves. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, go, going with the RSA, I'd be okay with you doing live ads. Yeah, see, I I think that's that's like the only way that I would do it. I'd be like, every once in a while, I'd be like, do an ad read, but like, kind of like a, I don't know, I'd find a way to integrate it. You know, I was just like, remember to talk about like that, oh, today I listened to another audiobook. Which, by the way, I did just buy another audiobook. Last night, um, you know, did you know that you can pre-order Martellus Evans, 300 Pounds and Running, the Instagram I met him at TRE. He sent me a book chapter to read. I haven't read it yet. But he was messaging me last night, and he's like, hey, the book's ready. Can I have my publisher send you an advanced copy? And I was like, um, you could, but uh, I'm a very slow reader. I mean, I read fine. It just takes me a long time to read things. I saw in one Instagram story that you were recording it. Can I get, get the audio version, or can you let me know when it it it, ha it comes out? And he was like, "Oh, it'll be out in June. They're not doing advanced audio copies, but let me see if I can get you one." I was like, "No, no, don't even bother. I'll just buy it because I want to support." Um, and I because he sent me a link for it on Audible, and so I just like, "No, I got this. Let me let me get the link. I'm just gonna get it now." So I was gonna post about it last night, but yesterday I had a whole bunch of stuff on the story about Greg coming over to the live stream. Um, so I didn't want to like jumble those two things. I wanted to give it a little bit of space, especially since the book doesn't come out for like another three or four weeks. So that's a book that you can get and you can get it on Audible. That's not even a sponsored ad read, but see, that's I feel like how I would do it. I don't know. By the way, the other thing, um, speaking of um, super slow reading, remember when I bought Ryan Van Duzer's book? I finished that two days ago. It took me that long to read it. And I'm not saying it was a light book, but it wasn't like a super thick book. I do feel like the margins were a little bit small on the paper, but you know, it took me a long time to read. I finally finished it. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Juliana VB says, I like the way that Allie on the Run runs her ads. Seems very natural and it's clear that it's an ad. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Will Gravel's got a P PR for us today. He says, I ran a 90-second beer mile PR yesterday. My greatest running achievement. Nice. Really nice. He says, uh, I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> uh, funny. Um, Sean Devlin says, it takes me six months to read a book. I read one to two pages a night before zonking out. Yeah, you know, I was... I just didn't read it for a long time. I just didn't pick it up for a long time for Ryan's book. And then I was doing like a chapter a night um, or less than that. Cause like sometimes it was done by day, like uh, as he was traveling. And so I would just read a day at a time. It just took me a long time to get to it, you know? Um, all right, let's do one. We actually have a running question here and then we'll get to the package. Michael Highland wants to know, Co. Looking to buy a new daily trainer, and I don't have a ton of shoe knowledge. Currently using the Hoka Clifton 8. I'm training for a half marathon at the moment, 20 to 30 mile per week. Recommendations? I would say if you like the Hoka Clifton 8, you can either get another Clifton 8. There's nothing wrong with that because it'll be on sale. But the Clifton 9, I think, is really nice upgrade from Clifton 8, especially if the Clifton 8 was working for you. This year, it's got a little bit more spring to it, and it's a little bit lighter. So like, if you're looking for a shoe that you might even be able to race in, that, that could be one as well. So um, that's one that that's probably the first place that I would look because uh, if you're liking the Clifton, I'd say just stay with the Clifton. So that's it. That'd be a good one. Um, all right, let's get to uh, the package. This one's from Drip Drip Drop O R S. I don't know what the O R S stands for. I do have some uh, jars of water over here, and hopefully I got a knife. Here it is back here. I can't see it because it's behind the computer. But you know, I never, sometimes like with these new companies, it's like, is it hydration products or is it sport drink? I don't understand why a lot of the hydration product companies don't also make sport drink. That part kind of confused me, but we'll see what these guys got. 
Oh, okay. Now I remember. I did look at the website on this a little bit. There's two packages in here. Um, everything is in like these little like uh, like crystal light type style like little sachets of drink. And these are it looks like oh okay. It looks like these are just rehydration drinks, but they do have some sugar in it, which I kind of like. I don't love the ones that are like zero sugar, but a lot of uh, electrolytes. I think some sugar is nice. So the two flavors that I got are, this one is, all right. This one, each of these bags has 32 of these little sleeves in it. This one has, wait a minute. This only adds up to 24. This has eight mango, eight passion fruit, and eight pineapple coconut. But then this is 32. Am I, I'm doing that math right. Eight times eight times eight. Eight plus eight plus eight. 24. This one says, oh, okay. Maybe I'm, oh, wait, maybe I'm reading it wrong. This says eight fruit punch, eight, uh, and this color, I can't even read it because I'm colorblind. It's blending into the background. What the heck does that say? Eight. This looks like it says cyanide, but I think it's Concord grape. See, you got to be careful. You know, I used to do uh, litigation consulting. One of the things I always tell people is a lot of men are colorblind and they don't know it. So don't get too cute with colors. Make them really contrasty. Um, all right, eight fruit punch, eight, what I think is Concord grape, eight strawberry lemonade, and eight cherry. All right, I'm going to go with, um, I'm gonna, I got two things of water here. I'm going to go with uh, fruit punch because I love fruit punch. Anytime it's something's fruit punch, this kind of looks nice. So lots of colors in here. Um, this is cherry. Yeah, that does say Concord grape. It doesn't say cyanide. Fruit punch. All right, let's try it. Uh, Martha says, "Is colorblind a sex link, link, link trait?" Yes, it is. That's why a lot. It's rarer for women to be colorblind. <laughs> cyanide flavor lol uh that's weird i mean i guess like if you were like liquid liquid death the sprit the water company that'd be a good one smells nice powder mm. it's very 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 red cb76 says drip dry socks just to get it <laughs> Joe says cyanide for killer recovery. <laughs> uh, Kesey says, I'm colorblind. Lots of colors in here. Yeah, well, you know, I see colors. They're just different than what other people see. And sometimes when two colors are close, uh, I have a hard time with it. I still see lots of colors. They're just different. All right. This, this mixed in really nice. There's still a lot at the bottom. I wish that I had brought us some sort of stir down here. But I think this will be good enough for me to get a sense of the flavor. Brian Lang wants me to just eat. He wanted me to just dry scoop it, eat the whole pack, and then wash it with a cup of water. No, man. <laughs> no. All right. Cheers. That's good. I could drink that all day. Absolutely delicious. That is... Mm, mm, that tastes like uh, Hawaiian... reminds me of Hawaiian Punch. I haven't had Hawaiian Punch lately. But uh, it remind it tastes like what I remember Hawaiian punch tastes like. That is delicious, um, and uh, I do have a lot of travel. I do have some travel coming up, so having like, I feel like having these is kind of annoying. Like if you have it at home, but if you're traveling, especially like on a race weekend, it's just a lot easier to bring your hydration drinks with you. And so like this one, since it has a little bit of sugar in there, uh, is good. So you're getting electrolytes and some sugar. Not sponsored, by the way. Um, yeah, Brian Lang says all the cool kids in the gym dry scoop their pre workout. I don't. I'm an old. Guy, I'm an old guy. I'm not like that. I don't do that. Um, by the way, though, t guys, today because I got such a late start on everything, um, today's a leg day, but I have not gone to the gym. But I did run, so this will be the first leg day where I do the run first and then the lift. Until now, I've been doing the lift first and then the run. 
and it's just been an easy run. But today, because I was trying to test out the um, Deviate Nitro 2, I was like, I should probably do a at least a little bit of a workout in those, even though I don't really need to be doing workouts right now. So I did a little fart lick. And now I'm tired. And now I got to go to the gym. So I'm going to, like right after this, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm not looking forward to it. I really don't, I don't really don't want to go. Ah. Lu Luis, this is a Hawaiian punch. Might as well have some scoops of sugar. Yeah, you know what? I was listening to, uh, on the drop podcast today, they were talking about, um, they were talking about, uh, who is it? Someone is making a uh, flat soda. But like that already exists. I forget what company it is, but there's a company out there that makes a, it called, it's called Colorado, is it Scratch? No. Tailwind. Tailwind makes um, Colorado Cola. Isn't that it? Um, Schumann fan says, you know, don't forget to bring your protein shake to the gym. I usually leave the protein shake in the car and I have it afterwards. Um, but in, in the gym, I usually do bring like a water bottle with some sugar in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I usually just got Gatorade or something. All right, here's the other bag. See, colorful. Let's try to get a. Um... Yeah, do I need to count this? It's because it's. I don't know. Eight mango, eight passion fruit, pineapple, coconut, mango. I want to get the mango. All right. I don't know. That fruit punch one was really tasty. I really like that one a lot. But I also like mango things, so this could be a good day for me right here. It smells like mango. Kat Jimenea says, sugar is life. Flat Coke and diluted Red Bull are my favorite. I've never tried diluted Red Bull. That's interesting. I like that idea. Because I always feel like Red Bull kind of reminds me too much of cough syrup. So I don't like that. Um, and I do like flat Coke. But here's the other thing. When I'm on a trail, I don't, I don't mind actually uh, regular Coke. Give me the bubbles. I'd I, don't, I wouldn't mind on a really, really long run, like ice cold Coca-Cola, and then getting a nice burp out. Oh, that'd be nice. I think so. Um, Will says, my favorite hydration is watered down apple juice with salt. Oh, that sounds interesting. Hmm. Um, and April Fletcher wants to know, do you think carbon-plated shoes for a race would be a bad idea for a slower, not-so-seasoned runner? I don't think it's a bad idea. Uh, I think that it depends on the carbon-plated shoe. The carbon-plated shoes that I like um, are ones that aren't super comfortable at, at my easier paces. You know, so like when I'm running a little bit um, off of marathon effort, there's like, oh, there's other shoes that I'd rather be in. These aren't bad, but, you know, they're not designed for like my some of my easier efforts. Um, but when I'm up on the toes and I'm running hard, that's when I feel like the shoes are really helping me out. I think for people that are like, as you describe it, slower or not so seasoned, I think that you're going to, you might be out there a little bit longer than I am I, because you don't, you didn't say how, how long it takes you to run a marathon. I was assuming that you might be. Um, but like, I think that at, there's a certain point at which like you want to be a little bit more comfortable and you're willing to make some trade-offs from the performance of the carbon plate. And so I think there's some shoes that I think that are more forgiving than others um, or are better for longer efforts than they are for shorter efforts. And so, like, it depends on the shoe. Like, I think that, like, the SC Elite is really forgiving, and I really like that one for people of all different types of um, paces and efforts. So that's one that I would kind of recommend. But one that I think is, like, a little harder to run in is, like, the Adios Pro 3 or, like, the Metaspeed Sky. Those are ones that I really like. Um, but when I'm very tired in those um, – then like I find like the shoe like kind of penalizes me a little bit. And so that's where I think it could be um, depends on the shoe. And I was just listening to an episode of Doctors of Running and they were talking to um, someone who had just done a study on people that were running eight minute to 10 minute miles 
um, and to seeing what their benefits are for carbon plated shoes. And it, I mean, the, as you would expect, they were interviewing someone who had done an academic research study. And these guys are doctors of physical therapy who are interviewing them. So it got pretty technical and into the weeds on it. But one of the takeaways that I had from it is a, a takeaway that I have from a lot of these like sports medicine or sports science studies is that it's like, well, they're measuring one thing and trying to extrapolate to another. So in that study, they were saying that like for quote unquote slower runners, um, their efficiency, their metabolic efficiency, like how much oxygen are they consuming? Or I think they're measuring how much CO2 are they ex exhaling um, was about the same in say a hyperspeed, which is like non-plated, more of like a flat racer, like an old fashioned marathon racing shoe compared to a marathon racing shoe with a carbon fiber plate. And they started wondering like, well, what does that actually mean in terms of times? You know, and what does that mean? Like, well, maybe on a treadmill running for 10 minutes or even an hour, that means something. But like when you're on the road for several hours, like an eight hour, eight minute marathon is 3.30, right? Something like that. So if you're out there for three and a half hours, what does that, the difference in being comfortable mean for your ability to make it the distance, you know, compared to what your actual metabolic efficiency is? So that's a very long-winded way of saying the science really doesn't answer that question yet, but I think that you can have it. It's your money on your feet anyway, but I don't think it's a bad idea. In fact, for a lot of people, I think it's a good idea. But I don't think every carbon-plated shoe is the right idea. Does that make sense? Hmm. All right. Um, all right. Mango. Cheers. This kind of smells funny. I don't know if mango smells like this. I don't know if it's just because I maybe I needed a palate cleanser, but I can't really taste anything. It's not strong enough. I didn't really measure out how much water is in here. I just put some water in a, in a glass jar. But I think this needs to be much more concentrated. It's not a strong enough mango flavor. Probably also could use a better stir. You got to get your nose really in it. Yeah, once I mix it up a little bit, the mango's nice. You gotta make sure you really get it mixed, so. But, so far, drip drop. Tasty stuff. Let's talk about some of the numbers on the back. Uh, you've got nine grams of carbohydrates, uh, 330 milligrams of sodium. You've got some vitamin C, magnesium, zinc, potassium in here. So, yeah. But look at this thing on the back. So it's not just for runners. Um, it's for exercise, heat, nausea, travel, sleep, and diuretics. And they've got a um, martini glass on it. But I just like all these little pictograms I got on the back. See that? Look at the one for diarrhea. That's a really nice drawing. Or no, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I said diarrhea, but I said nausea. But like it's someone like holding their belly. <laughs> but there you go. There you go. Drip drop. Not a sponsor. Hmm. Brian Ling says, Kofuzi, can you do a massive mukbang trying all the goo flavors? I've done that before. It gets really intense by the end because it's just so much sugar. I mean, even I'm even up not I'm eating the whole thing. But it's just a lot. Like, there's not a lot of time for me to do any chit chat. That's the thing. It's and it's you know, ultimately it's like uh, the bad ones are bad, the good ones are good. There's usually not too many um surprises. <laughs> Obi-Wan says the swirl releases the tannins. <laughs> and Mike C wants to know, did Greg do the drawing of nausea? Oh, pretty good. It kind of reminds me of, um, who's that artist? He was really big in the 80s and 90s um, where he had all the drawings of like, like little figures that would dance like this. And it was in always really bright primary colors. It kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. This is nice. 
It's non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, dairy-free, soy-free, kosher, no artificial flavors, and no artificial preservatives. Um, yeah. You know, I wish, like, especially when there's a product that has all these icons at the bottom of things that are not in here. Take this down for my... Um, of all these things that are not here. I wish that they would just go ahead and say whether it's made in a nut-free facility. That just make, make, would make my life easier, but now I gotta send an email, you know. Mm. Ah, Obi Run says the uh, the artist is Keith Haring. Yeah, I was a big fan of those. I always liked it because I was like, oh, this is art, but it's like cartoons. I like it. Sean also knew it. Mike C. You guys all knew it. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Martha says, though, this community is not nut free. That's, that's, that's true. Lots of nuts here. Um, Shuman fan says, uh, Heiko, could you please recommend a few good running books? Okay. I, I mean, I guess we should wait. I guess we won't have to wait for the Audible sponsorship to come through. But I would say two that I re read recently are Kara Goucher's book, The Longest Race, and Des Linden's book, Choose to Run. I think that's what it's called, Choose to Run. Both of those were really quick reads for me. I mean, I listened to them, but like, I, I just that's all I wanted to do. Usually I only listen to audiobooks like when I run. But for those, I just wanted to keep hearing the story. And so... Um, I just would listen to them anytime I didn't have to be listening like for my kids or, you know, making dinner or something like that. So like I would have it on all the time. Those were really good ones. And those just came out. The book that I read right before that was Myrna Valerio's book. Um, I forget the name of it, but that was a pretty good one as well. I think the book before that was Boys in the Boat. That was a relay, you know, that media group that I'm a part of. That was a relay book club book. That was actually good. Um, I talked about it at the book club um live stream that we did but it was weird because it talked about it was like the 1932 or 36 olympics i can't remember um and the one where the olympics were in germany and so it was about these boat guys that were the university of washington crew team and uh how they were like competing in nuremberg and i was in nuremberg listening to it because i was there on the adidas trip um and so that was kind of weird. And they were talking about like how like Nuremberg was like the seat of Nazi power. And that's why like the Nuremberg trials were in Nuremberg, you know, after the war. So it was kind of wild. It was kind of wild to, to, to do that. Uh, weird coincidence. Had nothing to do with the, the book per se. It was just coincidentally, I happened to be traveling to Germany for the first time to Nuremberg. But yeah, so those are some books that I, those are like the last four books that I've read, I think. Oh, and also Good for a Girl by Lauren Fleshman. Also a really good book. Those were the last five books that I've read. Yeah. How many was that? Four? I don't know. I lost, I lost count. Um, Obi Run says, have you read Peter Seagal's book on running? Is that good? It's been on my wish list for a long time, but since it's not like a new book, I've been like, ah, I'll get something more current. You know? So, I don't know. I got to keep stirring this thing. I got to remember to bring a stir. So I will say in cold water, not that ever, like most things have a hard time dissolving well in cold water, um, but this really is having a hard time dissolving in cold water. Like noon dissolves much better in cold water. But there's mango flavor here. Um, yeah, Martha says that the... Uh, Seagal's book on running uh, is hilarious. He used to contribute to Runner's World magazine. I didn't know that. Ugh, I'm sitting in my split shorts, and it's not very comfortable because it's all, ugh, it's all gross. Um, all right. Let's see what else we got in here. Mm, Stevie76 wants to know if these are dolphin safe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't say that it is, so I can't assume that it is. But I'm going to assume that it's dolphin safe. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Mm, all right. 
Uh, oh, Train Slow, Run Fast. Have I read that book? I think I have. I don't know. I feel like I've read most of the running books that are at least available on audible.com. <laughs> so I just go, I just go through them very, very quickly. Um, Obi Run says, uh, Seagal is funny. He's also a Chicago guy. Oh, I didn't know that either. Oh, well, all right. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to put, I'll put that one on. I think I got another, well, I think I used my last credit on, uh, Martellus's book. Um, so whenever the next one comes in on the subscription, I'll have to do it. Uh, Growing Rolava says, um, have you read Alexi Papa's book, Bravey? Yes, I have. That was a hard book to read. Um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't hard to read, but like, it's a pretty intense story. But that's an, also another one that I went through really quickly just because I liked it a lot. Um, Matthias says, did anyone mention I Hate Running and You Can Too by Semirad? Good quick read. I haven't read that one. Uh, I remember listening to the interview. I listened to the interview. Semirad was on Believe in the Run uh, or the Drop podcast. And I listened to that while running my last 50K. I ran the um, Crater Trail 50K. Um, and I remember listening to that. The specific part in my mind that I very, like you ever get that? Like if you've listened to an audiobook, like when you go run in a trail again, over a certain part, you'll like remember like a certain part of the audiobook again. Something that I very distinctly remember is in the middle of my 50K, I stopped to go to the bathroom in a porta potty, not in the woods, in a porta potty while listening to the I Hate Running and You Can't Do by Semirad. Not not that book, but like the podcast with the author. Isn't that weird? That's just how like memories happen sometimes. <laughs> uh. Um, all right. And Jennifer says that Peter ran as a guide with the team I run in Boston with. He does contribute to the running community. Nice. Uh, Jose Nave says 8020 running is a good book. Yeah, I read that one a long time ago. Um, Fitzgerald is a good writer. He's prolific. He's got another, he always, ha he's like, always has another book coming out. It's wild. Mm. Then, CJ Prusi says, I love what I talk about when I talk about running by Haruki Murakami. I listened to it a couple of times on Audible. I might go back and listen to that one again. Do you know where I remember when I think about that book? New Wine Park Trail in New Vienna, Iowa. There's a one particular part of that trail that is uh, first you go up a bunch of stairs um, that I believe were put there by the local Boy Scout troop. But there's stairs to go up this steep uphill. And then you make a right turn, and then it's not stairs, but it's a trail, and you just go up a hill for a really long time. That part, every time I run that now, I think about Murakami. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Stevie says, this is the number one podcast while, to listen to while sitting in a port and potty. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Mm, and Calvin says, did you see that Ben Felton is taking a break from the marathon distance? Going to try and set some track PRs while he's still young? I did not see that. That's incredible. I feel like, I don't, I don't I mean, he's going to do what he's want. Whatever interests him is great for him. He's a super fast guy. But like, wasn't he like the fastest Brit at Boston? I feel like, what happens if he keeps pursuing that? I don't know. That's what I, that's where I thought that was going. I mean, you ran a two twenty four on that course. Amazing. Mm. Frank says the oatmeal comic about running is great. I don't think I've seen that one. Mm. All right. Um, I think that's going to be a good place to leave it for today, guys. Uh, I'm going to go DM Audible and see if they respond to me, see if we can get something worked out. Uh, because clearly we got a, a lot of readers in this group. I do like I like to do a lot of reading on Audible. So uh, I feel like it could be a really natural match. You know, I, I'm not saying this podcast needs a sponsor, but, you know, I feel like it could uh, spice things up, make things a little bit more interesting. 
Because I'm here's what I, here's the reason why I was thinking about that. I had a really good time yesterday having Greg come over. As much as I didn't think it would be a, like a great idea, I felt like it really was a nice conversation. I enjoyed it, and I was like, "How can I get more people to come all the way out to Crystal Lake? Because that's a hard sell. It's far. But if we had a sponsor, that money can go to like paying for people to come out here. Not like paying them to come out, but like, hey, like I'll buy you a ticket if you want to come out here and hang out for a day. We'll make some content. You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking. Cause I I did I enjoyed that. So, um, all right. But you know what? That's where we're gonna leave it. Uh, we'll talk more about books once we get that Audible sponsorship. Uh, some other time. You guys have a lot of good recommend recommendations in in the chat. I I have thoughts on a lot of those books too because I. I've read a lot of them, um, but I'd love to hear what you guys think about it too. So this weekend, oh boy, a lot of stuff happening this weekend. My daughter still, her track season is still not over. She's running in sectionals tomorrow. She's going to be running the 800. So we're going to do that. And then we're driving straight to Iowa after that track meet. We got graduations and stuff. We got lots of graduations that were, I mean, we're even missing a graduation because my daughter's in sectionals. So um, there's a graduation going on today that we're missing. And then there's another one. That's also going on this weekend, so we're going to go to that. So we'll uh, be gone. But then Monday, hopefully Monday, I'll have the review out for the DV8 Nitro 2. Um, and then we'll do another live stream. I got more packages. Um, I also have to go pick up more packages. So we got a steady flow. Um, but I'll see you then. So have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy your long run. BCF out there. Thanks. <laughs>